class about how a big part of writing is the rewriting process, going back and adding in those elements that um, maybe maybe the audience, other writers have questions about, right? Giving us more details about what your main character wants or what they're going after, and those obstacles that are standing in their way, making them work really hard to get it. I mean, why do I have to feel this way? Ah, I don't understand why I feel this way, and I, why I don't have any control over it. I hate being different. Uh, if only I didn't feel this way about you, maybe things would be different. Do you ever think that God made us like this for a reason? Maybe you and I were just meant to be. <laughs> I don't think so, because everyone thinks it's a sin and that God is disgusted by it. If it did, he did make us this way, then, then why are people so against it? <laughs> I just wish they understood us. Yeah, me too. Man, I just hope Sister Lola doesn't tell on us. Man, if she does, I'm a dead man. You don't think she'll tell us? She'll tell on us, though, do you? If my dad finds out, he'll surely kick me out, and I'll get disowned. And... I don't know, but I'm really scared, man. I don't know how my father will react, since he's as hard-headed as Sister Lola. How, how was it this time around? Was it different than the last time? Because some, some students in here worked with me in the spring, and then wrote again this summer. The, the way I wrote it, it just came out naturally. Compared to the other one, I had to like remember about things. It was more about oh my gosh, the past yes. awesome. you bring up such a great point about when we write about something that actually happened to us that it can be more difficult than coming up with a new story. Maybe be inspired by something that happened to us, but then feeling, giving ourselves the freedom to change that or to, to fictionalize it. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, that you found this experience to be a little more free, yeah. just writing something fictional, but something that's important to you. But like you're writing about characters who are really standing up for what they believe in. Even the father, who is, um, uh, he does not want his son to be gay, right? So he is standing up for that, saying no, but then, like his heart opens up at the end. He, he realizes that, that it's not a choice, right? His point of view changes. His point of view changes, yeah. What is driving your main character? What do you want? When we talk about a want, we talk about an intangible want, right? Something they can't, something that the character can't touch, but is something that is typically universal. So, what are some examples of intangible wants? And these I know are in your scripts. Uh, communication, like they want to talk to someone else. So, like make a connection. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's a great one. I heard, I heard love over here. Love, absolutely. What else? Power. Power, definitely. So, a want doesn't always have to be something positive, but we hope that the character learns from that journey of trying to go after that one and maybe at the end realizes that that choice leads to consequences that they, that might have been unexpected, right? Look, I know I have not been a good father, but if the kids ask, where's dad? Tell them that I got lock, locked up again because I made a bad choice and got caught up, but all I want, all I want was to get the money so I could and give them all the things they wanted, just to see them happy and not see them suffering. All they needed was a father in their lives. Look, I wanted to make them feel the love of a father like I never had, okay? I, I didn't want the same thing that happened to them that happened to me. But the only thing I wanted was to hear from them was calling me dad, and I, I hope they do one day. But I know they don't because I was never there for them. You know what, Ava? The last thing I heard from my daughter was her saying, who is that man? And I told her that I was her dad, and my own daughter said, you're not there when I needed you. It was always my mom, so you're dead to me. I have to go already, Daniel. Um, I could really see the struggle yeah. of people trying to do the right thing, but then making a bad choice, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the consequences of those choices and showing remorse and, um, boy, that heartbreaking monologue. Yeah. yeah. And that, that acknowledging, too, that time is more important than things, mm. right? 
that the, what we all need and crave, I think, is time and experiences with the people in our lives who are important to us rather than things. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, that uh, he wanted recognition from his own children. Yeah. Of who he yeah. is in their lives, you know? Absolutely. Th that's why he was making these, you know, foolhardy choices. He wanted to choices, take care you know? of them, Yeah, he wanted right? to take care of them. Yeah. He wanted them to acknowledge him. Appreciated a lot of you guys, uh, your honesty with the material. Like um, we were saying in the beginning, how Mo was asking you, where do we get inspiration from? Where do we draw our ideas from? And a lot of it, I can tell, comes not only from your personal experience, but from your imaginations. And um, the experience part of that is being really honest with the source material, what, what you guys have lived or experienced or seen or been told uh, secondhand. And I really. Um, felt connected to those moments when you guys were just being really truthful.